Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Supernatural Files, while we dive into the unexplained and the supernatural realm itself. But today, we are not going about any creature, because we're going about, what if you had the thought to make something or someone real? Would you make that happen? Well, today, you're going to find out that you can make it happen. Better off said that you should not make that thing come to fruition. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the Tulpa itself. A thought so powerful that it can come into creation a being that could rival even the gods itself. Many cultures around the world believe that a person's thoughts have the power to change the way life turns out. Some even thinking about certain things will invite those events to come into our world. Some studies definitely suggest that there might be some truth to this. Optimists, for example, are more likely to be successful than pessimists are. For the most part, it's almost accepted that there is truth to the idea of having thoughts and intentions to change life around us. But what if your thoughts could change your luck? What if, by some strange power, they could take on a life of their own? In Tibetan culture, it is almost accepted that there is some truth to the idea of having thoughts and intentions that could change life around us. In Tibetan culture, it is believed that a person could create something called a tulpa. And what it's supposed to be suggests that our minds are really more powerful than we think they are. Now that the concept has been more familiarized around because of the internet, people are trying to create a topo themselves. But is this really a good idea? A topo is a concept in mysticism and the paranormal of an object that is being created through spiritual or mental powers. Modern practitioners use this a term referred to a type of will, imagined being, which practitioners consider to be sentient and relatively independent. Tobols have thoughts, emotions, and personality separate from their host. People who, who have more than one topos are called uh, topomancers. Topos can be created either with a collection of meditative techniques or accidentally when someone has an imaginary friend that persists later in life. Topos are sometimes able to communicate with the host. Thus, communication is done with alien feeling thoughts in which they sense thoughts that are distinctly not their own. Some topomancers may experience hallucinations of their topos. This includes auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, tactile hallucinations, and olfactory hallucinations. Topomancers that have these hallucinations may be able to see, hear, or touch their topos. Possession is when the topos take control of the body themselves. When possessing the host experiences depersonalization and the topa has control of the body alongside the host or switching places with the host having control of the whole body. And you're probably wondering yourself, how is a topa made? Glad you asked that. It all depends on whether you believe the old tales of the Tibet culture, or if you are more of a fan of the modern Topa mythos. In both mythologies, Topa is created by concentrating heavily on creating a fictional character until it starts to creating sentience of its own. The creator will think of everything regarding the Topa, including its personal appearance, its personality, as well as its preference. The thought forms start become to be more and more real. However, that's where the creational steps stop being the same. 
in the realm of the Tibetan lore, the Topa also involves meditation as well, as possibly using certain rituals to strengthen it. Among modern incarnations of the myth, regularly talking to it and emphasizing your belief in the Topa will strengthen it. Now that we've talked to the, about the Tibetan culture and how it came to be, let's talk about the Tibetan Topa story itself. In Tibet, Topas are fairly serious and are as thought as thought form that becomes its own being. In the 11th century, creating a Topa was said to be an exercise. In creating your own deity, the idea was that students should be able to see all the deities or exercise of the human mind. Students who accepted the deities were thought to be seen as failures. That being said, students would have a lot of reason to feel like the Topa was a deity. After the person created the Topa, it started to having the owner's personality and thoughts that are totally parallel to the human. But that's not all that happens. That is just the start of what happens when you create a Topa. Topas start to be increasingly more powerful after they are created. At first, the creator will only see, start to see glimpses of the Topa out of the corner of their eyes. After a while, they will be able to see the Topa standing right beside them. Soon, others start seeing the Topa. Then, the Topa starts to be interacting with real life objects. According to some lore, some powerful Topas can go out and do tasks, can be sent to meet others, or would be created to harm others. In some rare cases, Topas may actually buck the control of the creator and turn against them. The results can be allegedly fatal. You're probably asking yourself, how powerful can a Topa be? Well, we're about to get into that. According to Tibetan belief, a Topa can only be as powerful as the thoughts it was created from. A Topa that came about from a person that was unfocused or didn't take part in serious meditation may not have a very corporal form or just may appear as a gray mist. On the other hand, a Topa that is created from extremely powerful thoughts could possibly become a godlike creature. Well, I don't know about you, but there have been many occurrences like early in the 2000s. There was a character go around the internet known as Slenderman. It was made up as a joke, but as more and more people came across it through the early days of the internet, that creature started to have stories of, among its own from creator to creator. And it's possibly that that creature is still out there looking around, possibly hunting for suspected victims. I don't know about you, but if I come across Slender Man, I'm going to be running the other way. Thank you for joining me. And if you like this video, be sure to red subscribe button down below, thumbs up. Click the notification bell to always on and leave a comment down below. And like always, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Supernatural Files. While we dive into the unexplained and the supernatural realm itself, today we are venturing into the Krakota for and trick animals and humans alike. So, without further ado, let's get into this episode. The Krakota is a mythical dog and wolf-like creature. When the man approached, it would retreat back into the brushes. Local powers when placed underneath the tongue. Many classicists in the woods and you hear someone that repeats your name or talks to you as if someone is there and you go to investigate and someone is not there, do not go because 